growing your personal brand is probably the next big thing to making you the most money. And I'm looking like a crusty mother right now. I have an awesome podcast for you guys. I just got off the phone with Tuzer. You guys are gonna be learning a ton of shit. We talk a lot about personal branding, e-commerce, and overall just business and where it's heading. You're not gonna wanna miss this podcast. We'll see you in the video, enjoy. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Ecom Street, the best channel for e-commerce content. You're not gonna find a channel where two guys just love e-commerce. Today, we're here with Tuzer, the mystery man himself, e-commerce content player, huge personal brand. Dude, I'm seeing you everywhere on my For You page. What's going on? How's it going? Thanks for having me on here. Yeah, Super no problem, man. Some e-commerce. Yeah, man. Dude, I've, I've literally been seeing you everywhere on my For You page. Like your content is just coming up everywhere. Like, dude, I want to I wanna know like everything you're about right now and what you're doing and just tell me all about it, really. Yeah, it's funny. Um, every single time I meet someone in the e-commerce space, they always ask me that same thing. They're like, man, why the hell do I see you every single place on the internet? And uh, especially TikTok, right? Um, and uh, I mean, I owe it up to, I mean, everyone knows the top G, Tate, right? Um, I, I started following that guy, uh, I would say close to a year ago now. And I started realizing like, man, this guy is definitely up to something. And then, uh, I mean, a few months into me watching his content on YouTube, I started to see him pop up all over the place on TikTok and it was never his own TikTok account. So it got me thinking, I was like, Hmm, that made, that does make sense. Like you don't really need your own TikTok account. You just need content for people to repurpose. Um, so that's kind of where I got the idea. Um, I, I started filming everything, every single thing I do, making as much content as possible. Um, and that's not an understatement right now because I still think I need more. But I basically um, allow people to repurpose my content just like Tate does. You see other people in the space doing the same thing now. Iman Godsey does it really well. Um, a few other people doing the same thing. Um, but yeah, I, I leveraged that and uh, it allowed me to gain sort of a following in the space. Wow, that's awesome. So how long did that, that following actually like take for you to build? Yeah, so I had a first account. Um, this one was, I think, the end of last year, October or November, I started it. Um, that was the first time I really attempted the personal brand. And I, I really just saw the opportunity with TikTok and blowing up. I, I was already leveraging TikTok a lot for my e-commerce brands, but I kind of gained the confidence to do it myself. And I was like, man, I need to do this now. It's kind of a now or never thing. So I started doing my stuff on my first account and uh, I was posting videos of just what I was doing with e-commerce and like results of my stores and all that kind of stuff. And I grew that page in a little bit under two months to like 140,000 followers, I think on TikTok. Um, so I, I grew that following and then all of a sudden, TikTok just decided to delete my account. So, I mean, this has happened to a lot of people, I think in the entrepreneur space, I think they're always thinking I'm trying to sell something. I wasn't even selling anything at that point, um, leveraging my, my, my personal brand, um, but they deleted it. So I just start from scratch and um, yeah. So I started a next account, but this time, I started to leverage the, that Tate kind of strategy where we use multiple accounts and use different editors and leverage other people's talent to edit my content that I film in different viral structures so that they actually go viral in different ways. And it's kind of the same thing as with e-commerce where you're testing a lot of different creatives because you never know which one's going to pop. Um, and uh, my biggest account right now is 430,000 followers, I believe. And uh, a few other accounts are like 20, 30,000 followers and so on. So I think all, all, overall, um, across all platforms, I've grown around 600,000 followers uh, through this process. So definitely works. And uh, this can be used for anything, not just a personal brand. It could be used for any type of brand. Yeah, definitely. And I was going to ask you too, like, what's your general like framework that you usually like run through your TikToks? For? Like, I'm sure you have some sort of like process in terms of like what kind of hooks you want to use or just like general content ideas like how do you put that together yeah definitely so it all goes back to the concept where um every single idea isn't really invented right so if you look at every big idea invented for businesses um, any good idea content wise all these different ideas none of those ideas were really invented one off right they've always been off of an inspiration of other ideas that already are proven um, and obviously you don't want to copy ideas one for one, right? A lot of people do that on TikTok. It's kind of the culture on there right now, especially in the entrepreneur space. Um, but what I like to do is I like to find multiple ideas uh, across the entrepreneur space, even niches outside of the entrepreneur space 
and seeing what does really well and combining those ideas into one idea, which is more unique. Uh, and I can, I guess, call it my own idea at that point. Yeah. Because generally what I do, I mean, I have a personal like TikTok page too. I had one last year and I posted a video. It was about food <laughs> and it popped off. It got like over a million views. But then I kind of transitioned from that to business and then my videos would never really pop off. So I decided to create a new page, which was made literally like less than a month ago. And I'm almost at 10,000 followers. Yeah. the And the retention, I, I, I've been seeing your, your, your profile there. Um, the retention is a lot higher when you're giving value, right? Right. And not only that, though, I was just going to mention that I think like, because you mentioned you have multiple accounts too, right? I think when you actually start a brand new account, I think TikTok actually favors your content or kind of gives yeah. you some sort of like boost, you know? Yeah, because- that's definitely something in the algorithm. So on all short form platforms, I've noticed this and especially TikTok, um, the first few videos that you're going to be posting, they're going to definitely boost a little bit more. And they're, if, if you actually make a piece of good content that, uh, qualifies at least the slightest bit, they're going to push it a little bit further than your videos would be now later on, because they want you to kind of get addicted to that feeling of going viral. Yeah. And they want you to constantly be chasing that. And that, yeah. And, and it's as far as trends go as well. I mean, I'm generally just going through the for, for you page and I'm just scrolling and I'm seeing like, okay, like what trend can I match to what I want to talk about or what I want to like do yeah, in my video? Exactly. And I feel like TikTok is also favoring that as well. Like not just some video that you make filming yourself or doing whatever. I think if you're actually just consistently finding trends and you're going along with the other trends that people are making, it's just going to boost that automatically too, because it wants you to, you know what I mean? Like the algorithm wants you to yeah. be posting. Like- 100%, 100%. It definitely wants you to chase the trend. It definitely wants to tr- you to chase just posting in general and posting as much as you can. Um, and also new content. It wants you to post new pieces of content or new styles of content every so often. Yeah. If you post the same thing over and over again, you're going to also notice the same thing. Not only the actual, the real psychology of the human eye, but also the algorithm is just going to not favor you because they want you to change it, change it up. Exactly. What's your thought on using TikTok for uh, e-commerce brands, like leveraging that following or the views onto like an e-commerce brand or dropshipping store? What's your experience with that? Yeah, so it's probably one of the best tools that's ever came across the e-commerce industry. Um, short form, all the all of the organic tools that we have right now are just insane cheat codes. When I first started, I did kind of start it organic like four years ago when I just got into e-commerce. The first little success that I had was going through paid promotional posts on Instagram. I'm sure a lot of people did this, um, but those are my first kind of days of uh, first few thousand dollars in revenue. Um, but uh, just leveraging the organic traffic is super powerful. But now that we have the option to make stuff go viral without paying people and leveraging other people's uh, platforms and, and followings is super powerful. Like, and especially you can scale horizontally and vertically. So you can scale hor- uh, vertically with making things go viral on one account, but you can also go horizontally, like I said before, like how Tate does, or just multiple different accounts, fan accounts, um, and or multiple different accounts that are even like different um, accounts. They're not even under the same name, but they're all promoting the same thing. That yeah. makes sense. We were actually thinking too, like, I don't know if this is like ethical or if you can even do something like this, but having like, say like you're following, for example, let's say like you build like an e-commerce store or a dropshipping store. Could you take that store and let your audience sell the same product as you with like an affiliate link? Like, how do you think that would work if you were to like make multiple like brand pages with your drop shipping store and then have your audience run the same store with you with an affiliate link. You mean, uh, so you make a store um, yeah. and then you make a, a page. You're, are you talking about a personal brand or like just a, a page in general, like an each page? Yeah. Like say you have your own like drop shipping store. Like you found a product, yep. you want to start selling it online, but telling your audience, Hey, like we can be the first like store that we can all run together and give them like affiliate links so that they can start taking the content you have with your store, like your dropshipping store, and then yeah. make so multiple you're, pages you're, of it. Exactly. So you're saying building an army of affiliates under one account. Yeah. And then having those affiliates under that audience that you've built yeah. branch out to their own. Yeah. That's actually a really good strategy. Yeah. Cause we were actually thinking about doing something like that, but we'd have to do the research because like, I don't know. I, I wouldn't want it to be like a pyramid scheme. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's kind of like structured. Well, yeah. like- I mean, people, people always, and 
going back to Tate again, people always yeah. accuse him as a pyramid scheme, right? Yeah. It's not a scheme unless you're scamming people. He's actually providing value. He's actually selling something and he's delivering that product to those people, right? right so it's right. not a scheme. It is a pyramid. However, um, all businesses, they're all pyramids, right? Every single business has someone at the top and someone at the bottom. And in order to scale, it's about getting that pyramid wider and wider and wider at the bottom. And if you don't understand this uh, psychology, um, you won't succeed and you won't be able to scale past seven figures uh, in e-commerce or any business, right? Um, and this is actually one thing that we really stress, especially with all of our e-commerce brands right now. We like to think about it as the nightclub and promoter kind of strategy, right? So you have the, your nightclub and you have as many promoters as you can find. And each pro promoter obviously is trying to drive leads to your nightclub, right? Each promoter is different though. So there's different, different strategies that each promoter has to promote you. They have different friend groups. They have different strategies of talking to people. They have different places that they want to go find these leads from. So picture that as the same thing as an e-commerce. When you have one e-commerce brand and you have a bunch of promoters, but instead these promoters are people that run different traffic sources like Facebook ads, affiliate marketing, uh, uh, influencer posts, TikTok ads, TikTok organic. There's like hundreds of traffic channels that people have no clue about. Some of the biggest brands out there, they have no clue how many traffic channels are available to an e-commerce store. And some of these brands are doing millions, 10 million, $100 million a year, and they still can scale further, but they don't understand uh, how many places that they can scale to. So I really like to force that strategy onto my team where it's a nightclub and promoter strategy. Yeah. And I think that's a genius, man. I mean, today's marketing is definitely different than it was like five years ago. Like I remember I started e-commerce when I was 17 and everyone would just run ads. They would just go on Facebook, yeah. right? They didn't have all these omni channel marketing platforms that are available today. Yeah. Um, and that's why like TikTok's really, really changed the game, especially for us, because like we barely run ads, like we're just on organic. And because of that, we get a lot of direct traffic as well. They're not just going like the link in our bio, they're going on Google, they're searching it. People yeah. are referring us. Like, obviously we've built like a longer term brand. Like we've been around for almost three years now, uh, waiting to exit next year. Um, so obviously that stuff takes a long time to build up, like the organic and just like direct traffic. 100%. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, we have experience there. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I, uh, a lot of people get us confused. Um, and a lot of people comment on my videos and, and uh, even on my social media, my, my Instagram. Um, people always ask, is dropshipping still a viable business model? And my response to that is dropshipping is not the business model at all. E-commerce is the business model. Dropshipping is just a uh, form of fulfillment. So in the beginning, if you're wanting to test products or to verify an idea that, and see if it's actually going to sell in the beginning, Dropshipping is a really good tool to verify that idea and still be able to send that product to your customers without having to refund them and without having to put a lot of money down on inventory. And it's, it allows you to have a really low risk when you're starting a business. As soon as you verify that idea though, you're going to want to switch as soon as you can to a supplier that can supply a really high quality product. You're going to want to take in samples. You're going to want to private label, make sure all of the branding is correct and really good, uh, really good packaging and really fast shipping as soon as you verify. And people always tend to stick to the dropshipping model for their, the whole lifetime of their product um, because one, they don't understand that it's going to bring them a way bigger ROI if they switch over. And two, they are scared to reinvest the profits that they've already made into the inventory, uh, not knowing if the brand is going to have longevity and if it's just going to crash and burn. And sometimes they are right, where you might risk uh, a product just crashing and burning right off the bat. So you need, you, you need to kind of know like what analytics to look at to see if your brand is worth pursuing. But most of the time they are and they and people just let them crash and burn because they only rely on one traffic source. And there's a lot of different things that go towards all the optimizations that can prevent your brand from crashing and burning. But you have to switch to private labeling and, and your own product. Yeah. The thing is with our audience, like with our YouTube channel, like 99% of the people that are going to be watching this video are going to be drop shippers. And, you know, you got to make that leap. I think that's the most important thing. Like just taking that jump from, yeah. okay, drop shipping online, finding random products on AliExpress or whatever it be like Taobao, that kind of stuff. Then finally making that jump to e-commerce and 
Oh yeah, hundred okay. percent. Well, that's kind of the reason why I found drop shipping such a as such a um, attractive business model in the beginning. Yeah. Because I guess I I just was biased there. I I just said it's not a business model, which it isn't business model. Business model is e commerce, but I just found out about drop shipping. I saw it in an ad, and I realized that leveraging drop shipping. I can literally sell anything at any time with no money. And at the time I literally had no money at all. So it was super attractive to me. But uh, now that I have capital built up for multiple different brands and other e-commerce or other uh, tra- uh, income sources, now it does make sense to even test a product or invent a product, uh, make a new version of a product before even launching it. Um, but there's so many different ways that you can verify if a product's going to sell. Like Kickstarter is a really good idea as well. Yeah. If I was a 17 year old right now, I would probably just get, I don't even make something like just pretend it's a product that's available and like smoke test it. I don't know if you've like heard of smoke testing before, if you're familiar with that term. Uh, maybe not. So it's basically like when you put a product online that doesn't exist yet and yeah. you run traffic oh, yeah. on the page and then people buy the product and then you basically just refund them. So you're basically testing the waters just to see people are actually exactly. willing to buy the product you have. Um, but if I was 17, I had no money. I would hundred percent do that. Like even if it was just an AliExpress product and you didn't even want to like buy yeah, inventory, if you refund them. It's totally fine. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's where drop shipping comes in where you can actually just fulfill those orders, but say you don't even want to do that. You just, you know, you're, you're scared to even drop ship. Yeah. You can just build a landing page, send traffic through TikTok. Like that's, that is literally like the easiest, that's the, that's the playbook. Like that is literally the yeah. playbook. There, there, there's so many opportunities. You know what I mean? TikTok has made it so easy to get started. Like so easy. Um, it's actually crazy. It's actually crazy. Yeah. What we did with, with our brands, we didn't have any money. And what we would do is film products on the floor. I think I was telling you about this when we met up and we would put like literal underwear on the floor, dude, like in my basement with a blanket and we would film it for, you know, 10, 10 seconds at a time, put some really, really like clickbaity or just like screwed up scenarios into the video. Um, yeah. so an angle that worked well for us was just like, Oh, like I'm wearing a tight dress. Like, look what I'm wearing under my tight dress. Cause like, you know, we, we sell women's products. It's all about dresses and looking good. And the video got 8 million views, 8 million views. Oh, so how did you, how did you guys start, uh, end up starting your brand in the beginning? Was it through TikTok? No. So we were, we took the traditional like drop shipper route, right? We ran Facebook ads and, you know, we didn't really see it going anywhere until October, 2020, when we actually decided to, you know, let's just try to tick tock, right? Like people are using it. Like, like what, what else do we have to lose? Right. It's free. And then we just started going absolutely viral on there. We insanely viral getting millions of views, like with the same method, because we didn't have money to, to get content. Right. Yeah. And we would just film shit on the ground and then eventually it would just pop off, you know, but I think the best way now, at least to get content, there's a company called, uh, I don't know if you've heard of billow or incense. Have you heard of incense? Yeah, yeah, I've heard about this below okay. this collab stir. There's a few of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So incense is really cool. So you can actually find creators that are a perfect match for your brand and you can send them your products and they'll make content for you. It's like literally like the laziest way you can get content. It's like it's, it's so easy. Uh it makes so it what really- was this one called? It's called incense. I N Incense, cool. I N S E N S E Incense. And um yeah, it's uh, it's it's a really really great platform. There's a lot of lot of creators on there. I think it's like one of the biggest like content platforms there is, um, and it makes it really really easy for users to get content. Um, you do have to have a little bit of a budget though, because you do have to pay the creators, right? They don't yeah. just like do a free post. Um, so we've seen that work well with our brand, just getting like a bunch of content. I think that's the real like framework. You just have to load up on content if you want to win at least in 2022 or 2023. You got to turn your company into like a media company. Just produce content, pump out content as much as you can. I think that's the real way to win. Yeah. Uh, you definitely have to understand budgets as well and, and yeah. dividing your profits and, and dedicating that percentage of the profits to content. Um, typically around like 25% at least of your revenue, you should be, or not your revenue, your profit, you should be reinvesting into content and having a literally hundreds you should get to the point where you're having new content by the hundreds every single week yeah you can definitely get to that too like in a really really quick amount of time like you'd be surprised how fast you can achieve that how what, do you- what are your thoughts on uh uh other platforms like billow and collapser and all those other ugc platforms i haven't used collapser but i've used billow um 
the billow is it's interesting like between you and i like you're not going to find the most like attractive people on there <laughs> yeah. on billow especially if you have an apparel brand um but i mean it's good for like other stuff like if you have like a watch brand or something you want someone to like wear your watch like i guess if you don't have to show someone's face like that kind of thing but like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i guess it, it depends on your niche right you guys are definitely wanting um good looking girls and stuff for your yeah, brand yeah. right 100 um, so like we had some like you know not really attractive people like apply to the like i don't want to be rude but like you know we gotta we gotta have like good looking people in the ads and everything so i don't know yeah. I, I, bill is a good alley i'm not i'm not bad mouthing them or anything but they are a great pop. Like they're really quick. Like you'll send customer product and they'll, uh, they'll do it. Like no problem. They'll make a video for you. So. Yeah. hundred percent. I'm actually like really surprised how these platforms like below all these other platforms are kind of like restricted. Um, I'm uh, like, obviously I have brands. I have three brands that we're building out right now. And the biggest thing that's holding us back is lack of content. Obviously the most traditional method of finding UGC creators is just going through social media and finding people on Instagram and TikTok, but that is, that is super tedious and it's really hard. And you're most likely going to have to delegate that to a VA or someone that in that, uh, someone in that nature. Um, but the most convenient method would be to go to these platforms, but all these platforms that we've tried, it is just such a task. And the biggest thing is like the product, the UGC creators on there. Um, they're just not suiting our brand and, and it's just hard to trust that they're actually going to do well. And they're also super expensive for what they are. Um, especially some of these, uh, platforms like Billow, a lot of the UG, UGC creators are not actually doing UGC just for the video. Like we want just the video for our own use for advertising, yeah, right? Exactly. E-commerce videos want this, but they're advertising their UGC creators as like, uh, story posts and feed posts and all this exactly. kind of stuff. Exactly. Like no one expensive. No Nobody one actually wants, wants that. that. <laughs> Nobody yeah. wants that. And, and we've noticed that, and it's a really big bottleneck in our businesses. So we had to create a solution for ourselves. So we're actually building our own platform. It's called vidpop.io. And oh, it's sick. gonna allow you to uh, basically shop for UGC creators, just like you're shopping for products on Amazon. So it's gonna be really, really seamless. Um, it's gonna be also affordable and people are going to be curated just for e-commerce brands, not just for their own personal brand and what they think they should be uh, charging all that kind of stuff. Uh, we want it to be curated around creating actual good UGC videos that will convert um, in the sense of also, it's basically the same thing as if you're going to find them in like TikTok creator marketplace, but even more seamless than that. So um, something to keep you guys' eye out for. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, like send me like an early like beta version of it. We'll yeah, I'll, I'll definitely give you beta access. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. That'd be really cool. That'd be awesome. When you're uploading your content, right? Like you, you said you have like video editors that actually do like all like the video yep. editing for like all the pages, right? So where exactly did you find them? And like, what's the process for that? Like, how do you like delegate that responsibility to someone? How do you know what to tell them in terms of what content you want? Because I'm yeah. like, I'm, I'm almost answering this question for myself, but even for my audience too, because there's a lot of people that are starting their personal brands and they kind of want to know the same thing. So probably the best way. And I mean, not everyone has a following on social media. <clears throat> I was leveraging my following as well. And posting on my story to find these leads. Um, but the easiest way for anyone is just to post on your personal TikTok and just tell people that you need editors for this role and just be transparent. People are like, just post to basically a job posting and give examples of what the work that you want done on that job posting on that video on TikTok, and you'll get a lot of hits. So, it, what do you look for like in your job posting? Like, what exactly do you write? What experience you experience experience it's the main thing and a lot of companies now like all the big tech companies like google they say the same thing it's all experience you don't even need a degree nowadays yeah. um tiktok instagram that's basically your resume nowadays and i've a lot of the people on my team i found through tiktok and instagram so um as long as they have a good tiktok to show for and they can consistently make viral videos and they can upload uh actual good content to I mean, you're probably gonna have to have a form to get all this uh, information from them. Um, but they like, as long as it's all good and it, it goes good with your niche, um, that's usually a good hire. And then from there, you don't really want to be training them. Obviously, you can send them good ideas and stuff once you hire um, new TikTok sounds, new ideas that you see going trending. Um, but other than that, it's all up to trusting their talent and just giving them your content and letting them basically uh, take over everything with their own their own creativity to go uh, to go viral yeah so there's really not that much delegation and they kind of just like 
see your kind of vibe and they kind of match it and just find like trends and they do it themselves. exactly you're gonna definitely have to regulate it a bit because you don't want people like making you look bad right yeah but look at andrew tate as long as you put out good content for them to use like he's all over he has like thousands of accounts and yeah. I, I have like 10 10 or something like that he has thousands so just uh make sure that you have good content for them to edit and then just let them go and do you just have one editor for 10 accounts or do you have multiple multiple okay and they're like, the same process like you just you give them like your google drive it's i'm sure it's categorized like i'm sure you have like folders yeah. for like what's in each uh right like a like a like a yeah, yeah you definitely need some organization so they can navigate all your content um but yeah everyone gets access to the same thing and everyone basically is you basically it's the same as like top chef you give everyone the same ingredients and they all have to make uh their own dishes right yeah so when did you get to the point where you actually needed editors like when was that because i know you grew your page to over 400k so when was the actual um like i guess you say how many followers did you have when you made that shift from doing it all yourself to actually having video editors yeah so as soon as i realized that i literally do not have enough time to sleep or eat anymore uh i was like okay uh, I have to make this as efficient as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to film everything I'm doing and then allow them to edit it for me. Um, because I, I mean, I'm building like, I would say one, two, three. So two so software products, uh, Vidpop, BrandBullet.io, um, an education company, um, three e-commerce brands, and then also this uh, TikTok editor thing I've turned into an agency as well with a partner. Um, and we're scaling that as well, not towards, uh, like the same niche as I'm in, um, but more towards uh, the music industry. Wow. Yeah. So I literally have no, not enough time to edit things myself. I don't have enough time to just be on the ground, just doing ground work for anything I do anymore. So how do you spread yourself out then? Cause I know you must have a, like quite a bit of hires, but I mean, like, I know as more ventures pop up and the more businesses you have, like, at least for me, I know the quality kind of like diminishes a little bit. I can't put like my full hundred yeah. percent effort. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously with hiring, like you can replace that, right? You can get the effort from them and the quality, but I mean, your head is your head, right? Your brain is your brain. 100%. So I mean, like, thing that, out? Yeah, yeah, this is another thing that is um, kind of asked a lot. And especially in the drop shipping space, um, everyone in the drop shipping space, they haven't really like exited the small business mindset to the big business mindset where you really need to pay attention of where you're putting your time and energy. And they forget that they are the most important part of the business and they are the CEO, right? The chief executive officer. And you need to be making executive decisions only. You want to be making sure that the ship is driving properly. Everything's running properly, but you want to be the overhead of everything. So when you have all these projects, you're going to want to have um, a certain amount of contacts that can only uh, contact you because you just don't have enough time to respond to everyone. And you need to basically set up, just like we set, spoke on before, a pyramid type hierarchy, right? Making all of the executive decisions and everyone underneath you uh, takes action on, on those uh, on those decisions. Um, so I would say this is one thing I'm still exploring and it's still something really hard because I do have such little time. I do have a lot of people that work for me at this point, um, but you need to just think about um, like Shark Tank, for example, look at Mr. Wonderful, look at uh, Mark Cuban. These people have like, I'm sure they have investments in like hundreds of companies, right? Oh yeah. And almost oh, yeah. all of those they're on the board for. So they make sure that they are giving the value that they can afford to give to those companies. And in that sense, uh, I would even think, I don't know if this is for sure a fact or anything, but what I would think is they probably, for some of these companies, they only spend like an hour a month on them, right? So they make these executive decisions that one day of the month, and the rest of the month, everyone else takes action on it. And that's how um, you delegate your time. And that's how I've been delegating my time. Yeah, that's awesome. So how many, how many hires do you have then right now? Like just like roughly? Um, I think, I mean, everyone, including VAs and everything, probably like close to 30. Yeah, um, awesome. But other than VAs, probably around close to 20, I would say. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the most we've ever been staffed is just over 10. But, uh, you know, we, to we toned it down with the brand and now um, like we only have a couple, it's like three. And then we have our own like YouTube editor. So that's another one. And then now we have a video editor for our agency. So it's total, what was that? Five, right? Five. I think that's the right math. <laughs> cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's also one thing too. Like once you get, are you new to the hiring process and 
uh, bring on more team members, all that kind of stuff. You can kind of start forgetting that you want to keep it lean as possible. Um, there's actually a quote that my friend um, told me about Elon Musk. Um, is Elon Musk's t- quote, but he says to, if you're not cutting more systems than you're adding, uh, you're doing it wrong. So you want to always be cutting systems and making sure that you're running your business as simplified and as lean as possible. Yeah, no, that's definitely, that's great advice. That's really good advice, yeah. That's the one, cutter- that's like the one thing that we're like making sure we pay the most attention to right now is cutting systems and simplifying everything. And it's just so hard to do any aspect of the business if it's not simplified. You can't delegate things. You can't teach people how to do things. Um, and it just makes it so messy if you don't make it simple. So do you have any big plans for like the next like five, 10 years of like what you guys are doing? Like, is there like like three to four like main focuses? Because I know you, you have a lot going on, but is there like the, that two or three, maybe four things that you know are just going to like take off in the next five, 10 years? Or is it going to be more like personal brand related? Like what, what do you have going on like for the future? Yeah, hundred percent. So I, uh, I'll start with what we're building on the software side because it kind of fuels everything that we're doing. So obviously for the last four di- four years, I've been e- in e-commerce. Um, but one of the biggest things that I've found that was holding me back from scaling was having proper systems that were always in place to basically put an idea through and it'll turn it into a insane brand. Um, so that's what we're building with brand bullet. So we're basically going to have every single possible optimization and traffic source that you can, uh, add to your e-commerce store to scale it and bring it to fashion Nova size or bigger, um, and basically have that an automated process. So all you have to do is basically find your idea, uh, and verify it. So you're going to have to be, uh, on the ground for the, the beginning part, testing the product, making sure that it's verified smoke testing it, like you said, or yeah. whatever, uh, technique that you choose. Once it's verified and you have the initial profits uh, to reinvest, then you basically come to Brand Bullet and we can qualify you and, and see if you actually have longevity. And then we basically put you through the brand. It's basically a brand printer. Um, and then along the way, um, our acquisition team will basically look at your brand at each step and see your progress and see if we want to acquire you um, or invest in you. Uh, and we also want the reason why we bought or sorry, built this and we're building this as we speak is because we needed this for our own brands. And um, we're basically solving that problem. Same with vidpop.io, vidpop.io. Um, we're building it because we had that problem with our own brands. So those two things are fueling everything. And then um, for the future, um, I know you guys are, your, your culture is not about selling courses and all that kind of stuff, but I do have a program and my goal for that program is to basically have people use my strategies that I use to build my own brands so that they can be clients for that brand bullet.io. And we can uh, eventually acquire a thousand, uh, acquire and also build a thousand storefronts. And then once we get to a thousand storefronts, we want to open up a metaverse mall uh, with those storefronts. Yeah. I remember so. you, I remember you telling me that when we, uh, we linked up the metaverse mall, that's going to be interesting. I'm not, I'm not really too into like the metaverse kind of stuff. Like I'm, I'm sure eventually I'll have some sort of, investment in there or whatever like whatever um but that sounds really cool metaverse mall man i can't even like put my mind around like you know what i mean it's crazy to think that we're coming for you bezos (laughs) (laughs) yeah dude you you might be like who knows like depending where like how big it gets like that could be freaking crazy I'm i'm a really strong believer in uh the way the generations are improving and and acquiring um knowledge over time like our generation is obviously going to be a lot faster to learn and acquire uh, information from the internet and all about this technology and stuff than uh, Jeff Bezos's generation, right? The generation after us is going to be even faster. If you look at all the kids right now, every single one is learning on iPads. And I mean, um, there's so many students or sorry, students, there's so many people out there that are starting dropshipping businesses and they're like 14 years old. Like, it's crazy. When I was 14 yeah. years old, like, I couldn't even imagine a business or anything like this, right? So it just gets faster and faster. So, I mean, I, I really don't think that uh, accomplishing something like Amazon or something like that is really that hard. You just need to understand a few key factors uh, about business and, and understanding that every idea is made up of multiple good ideas. And also every single successful business like Uber, Amazon, Airbnb, all of those businesses are basically just a convenience business. So they're basically a uh, convenience between consumers and sellers or taxis and consumers or houses or 
uh, rentals, properties, and consumers, right? They're all convenience business. So that's what we're planning on building for e-commerce. Yeah, they say the the best businesses they get into are like the most boring businesses. Like never like go to like the cool side because it could be like too complex. Like if you really want to make your most, like the most money, you should go to like a boring business. So they say like, I don't know, like waste management or like something like that. You know, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, that is true. That is true. I mean, um, if there wasn't all of this opportunity, there's so many different opportunities in, out there you don't want to be passionate about, but, um, or that you don't have to be passionate about. Yeah. But the main goal is to be in between as many transactions as possible. So if you can find a way to be in between as many transactions as possible, like Amazon did, I mean, it's just, just, as, it's just as possible. Yeah. I think even just hopping on to like just studying consumer behavior and seeing what people are actually focused in now, because like back in the day when Amazon was started, like they started off as a bookstore, but you know, there wasn't really any online businesses like there, like there was obviously. Right. But like they, they didn't take off like Amazon did. Right. So they, they kind of found something that was already working, but they just made it like 10 times better. Um, so, I mean, there's businesses that exist right now that are doing a really crappy job. Like you could just take their angles or take whatever they're doing and say, okay, like, how can I improve this? How can I improve that? Like, why are they failing here? And then just take like all that put into one and just make your own version of it and make it better. Exactly. The best school is just to be a student of your environment. And when you're in business, and especially when you have access to a laptop, you can see every single online business out there. You don't have to walk anywhere. You don't have to travel anywhere. You literally just type it in Google and you can find that business and you can dissect, reverse engineer and dissect it yourself. I was going to ask, you take your Bali trip yet? Yeah. So we were planning on doing a Bali trip with the team um, actually for the end of this month. But because of everything that we're building, um, I've kind of decided that I didn't really want to at this time. Um, but definitely going to do it in the future here. I, I, traveling is, I mean, I didn't really get to travel and leverage like my online business income and making money from anywhere in the world until after COVID. Um, cause I kind of had my come up through COVID my first, my first kind of successful store was in 2019. And then after that, uh, I kind of, I mean, I definitely spent a lot of money on courses and, and, and educational kind of stuff to improve my skills. Um, and then after that, COVID came and I couldn't even uh, use my money to go travel. So once I went to travel after COVID, I realized how much of a blessing that is. I realized I actually get more stuff done traveling sometimes, depending on what the work is. If it's really in-depth stuff like building teams and like a lot of filming, all that kind of stuff, I'm going to want to stay home. But if it's just networking and uh, and, and uh, increasing your I- ideology and creativity, traveling is like one of the biggest weapons in business. Um and it's just, it's just a blessing, man. I love traveling. It makes me feel great. Yeah. You know, I actually did my first like batch of traveling like this year. Like I went to California when I was a kid. That was the only time I really left like the country. Um, so this year I went to, I went to Utah. I went to Calgary, went to Montreal. Um, I mean, two places within Canada, obviously the goal is to leave like the continent. Like I want to go to Bali too. I want to go to Europe. I've never, I've never been to Europe or like any, like literally I've never left the continent. Yeah, Europe is definitely next up for me. For sure. Yeah. Hell yeah. We should plan a trip or something. Like, I'm sure you Definitely. like you, you have like your Amex card with all the points and everything, right? Oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I I was actually just looking at a trip for November and I was like, oh wait, I have points. The the trip is free. Dude, <laughs> dude I'm an idiot Crazy. too. Like, what I would do is actually buy like the flights on Expedia and then pay with points. But I'm a fucking idiot because if you actually like, I'm with CIBC. Like, I have an Aventura card, so if you actually buy the ticket through CIBC, it's like half the amount of points. And I didn't yeah, even you just that. go straight to the Amex site. And like, there's so many different options. You can Dude. buy like, it's like an, an ATV or something. You can buy yeah. anything. On there. I had no clue, bro. And I was so bent because I was like, fuck, I just spent like, I don't know, like how many points I spent like maybe 600,000 points just this year, like with traveling and just like a bunch of shit. So, but I could have did like half of that. Like I could use half the points and like kept like another like 300 K. <laughs> the one thing I hate about traveling though, is the actual travel part of it. I like being there, but I don't like traveling. I hate airports. And I mean, I didn't realize this until I was traveling like every month or twice a month and all that kind of stuff. Um, airports are the biggest inconvenience and they waste so much time. I know. Um, I feel like this airport systems can be improved so much. Um, but because of that, like definitely one of the biggest purchases and uh, that I would do and like I would a lot of people would call it stupid, but I've calculated myself. Um, I think a private jet is definitely a good investment for a company. Um, eventually that's definitely going to be a goal of mine. Um, but if there's anyone out there that can make an app or a software that can leverage 
uh, points from Amex cards or any credit card that you can have like shared charter for private jets, uh, I will invest in you because that would be <laughs> a really good software. I mean, technically you could just like charter a jet or, 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 or charter a jet. Yeah. You could but charter a jet with, have points too. yeah, like you could charter a jet with your card and then just like use your points for the, like for the payment. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. You know, but, but then, still. but then it would just like use a fuck ton. Like it would just use like a lot, you know what I mean? But that'd be a really good, uh, like demographic to hit because everyone that has a lot of points would want to fly in a private jet. Right. So that's true. Or you can get one of those like travel passes too. Like they have those like a United airlines, like yearly credits or something like that, where you can just travel. Like, I think like 30 flights or something like that. I don't know how it works, but you can get a flight pass. I've heard a lot of people do that instead of like getting a jet, they can't get one yet. Like they just get like 30 credits for the year or something like that. Yeah. I did the calculation. Um, and, uh, I'm not there yet, but we're working out on it hopefully in the next couple of years or so. But, um, to make it a viable decision to fly in a private jet like f- five times a month. I forget what the ac- exact calculation was, but I think it was like five times a month flying. Um, you need to be making around $10 million a year at least for it to be worth more than your money. Wow. And, and that's just to fly five times a month on a private jet? Yeah, because the time is more important. Wow. So that means what? Like how much is it per flight then? Like 50,000? Like 50, 50, 10. Or, yeah, anywhere from ten to like fifty thousand, depending on how far. Or probably a bit, maybe a bit less, because if you're doing five times, yeah, I don't know the math. I don't, I don't know the math, but yeah, it sounds like it would be quite a bit. I heard jet fuel alone is just like insane. Yeah, oh well, yeah, <laughs> just the fuel, months. like not even like for the flight, like just the fuel is like, like yeah. crazy. So, but yeah. that, that that's a big goal of both of ours one day, you know, make it up there, 100%. and uh, I'll see you. I'll see you on the private jet. Exactly, exactly. We'll have our next podcast on the on the PJ. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be, I'd love that, man. Yeah, we got, we got to plan a trip or something, man. We got to come down to Vancouver. And, 100%, uh, come down to Vancouver. I'm going to get my COO out here. Um, and uh, we're going to do a bunch of e commerce stuff. I, my plan was to have some kind of an event in Vancouver this year. Didn't really get to it too busy, but next year for sure, I'm going to have some kind of a mastermind or something. Yeah. I kind of wanted to plug something too here. Like we just started our agency and it's called D2C House, but like the name for that is. That. Yeah. So the name of that is actually like for the future, we plan on having like a content house, like full of like entrepreneurs, like e-commerce guys. Yeah. And I feel like, like you and Zach, like that would be like, like a per- you guys would be a perfect fit for that. And like the, the idea for that is just like have a bunch of like competitions that are related to like e-commerce or like just direct to consumer, like dro- it could be drop shipping anything. And, you know, it would be something like first one to make $50,000 in sales, like gets a prize. And like the loser has to like do like a humiliation if they lose, like they'd be like places. And I think yeah. that'd be like, I think that'd be so cool. Cause there's not a lot of like comedy or like, I guess like entertainment, like business channels, like there is, but they're not good. And they're not like young either. They're a bunch of like older people, you know? So I'd want, I'd want to be like humorous and like, like kind of like devious and, you know, it, I, that's really, that's really like our big like vision. Like we really want to do something like that. Yeah. Super good idea. I've definitely entertained that idea a few times. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just depends how you execute it, but I would treat it more like a show kind of, you know, like where it's like per episode basis. Yeah. And I would definitely want to get like a production team involved and just have like, you know, like the drones and all that stuff, like circle the house, like get it. Like everyone has their own camera. Like every member has their own camera and they film themselves throughout the day, what they're doing. And then, you know, it's just, that's, uh, that's something I really, really want to do. So hopefully, uh, you know, when we exit our company, that's going to be like a make or break for us too. And uh, we can do whatever we please with, with that. So definitely definitely hit us up before you exit i don't know when you guys are planning to exit but um i mean going through brand build io on uh, the beta version is gonna be really cheap so it might be a good way to improve that uh exit money yeah we had a i may have i may have to ask you something off the podcast i'm just trying to remember what it was but we had something similar that we were doing like for instance that maybe we could do with you guys like if depending on when you guys get your uh, like beta version live but i'll ask you after I'll ask you yeah, after. VidPop. VidPop is just a just one little asset inside of Brand Bullet. So okay, it's kind of like the main catalyst. Everything like content wise, everything um, in e commerce, everything, every single step, every single traffic channel optimization, almost all of them include content UGC. So that's why VidPop is kind of our catalyst for Brand Bullet. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. 
it's definitely an awesome podcast. We're definitely going to link to her in Vancouver. We're going to fly down there. We actually do have a vlog that's coming up on the channel. We're not sure if we should put it on our other channel we're thinking about making um, and having more of like a, just a separate vlog style kind of content. Like we started a new company called D2C House and um, it's basically just like our marketing agency and also like the media side of things and what we're doing on our day-to-day -day lives. So we're not sure if we should post the vlog on there or this channel here but uh, nevertheless it's going to be uploaded so i hope you guys enjoyed that podcast please like and subscribe to our channel we absolutely love you guys and we will see you in the next video take care